In the last video, we talked about how the immune system is this kind of network for defending the body against danger. In this video, I want to talk about a common immunologic problem that is called urticaria. And urticaria sounds like a formidable term, but it's really just kind of medical parlance for hives. And an incredible number of people have had hives. Hives occur in anywhere from 10 to 24 percent of people at some point in their lives. But exactly what's going on in hives? So let's say, let me get a good color here, let's say that this is the surface of your skin, like the skin kind of purplish here. And let's say that this is the outside world, right? So this is like where the air would be. And the uppermost layer of the skin is this kind of thick, tough, dead layer. Actually, it's not even cells. It's the degenerated remains of cells. And then underneath that is kind of this wavy line that serves as a borderline between layers of the skin. Now this upper layer here is called the epidermis. Epidermis. And the epidermis is actually the product of some very important cells that live right on the border here, kind of covering this whole area down here and out here. And these cells are called keratinocytes. And they get their name from the fact that they contain a large amount, keratin. Ocytes. Ocytes just means cells. So cytes is cells. And keratin is the name of this, uh, of a major protein in this layer. And as these cells kind of grow up, they degenerate, they become full of this keratin protein as well as a number of others. And it's this keratin layer here that kind of allows, it acts as like a shield for our, for our, our bodies, our deeper tissues, so that we can you know, scratch ourselves and not bleed, and we can wash ourselves with soap and we won't dissolve. And that's all thanks to the epidermis, which is an incredibly important layer of the skin. But it's pretty thin. Uh, it's not very thick in most places. Um, but underneath the epidermis is a much thicker and more complicated layer called the dermis. Now the dermis has a number of variable structures here. Whereas like keratinocytes are largely the cells of the epidermis under normal circumstances, the dermis has a lot of complicated structures. And chief among these are blood vessels. Here's a blood vessel. And I'm, I'm kind of making the wall of this blood vessel a little thick to demonstrate that um, it's actually made of muscle. So this is a layer of muscle. And let, right in here might be a, a nice red blood cell kind of flowing along uh, into or out of the plane of the screen here. So this is like a tube cut in cross section. And blood is flowing through the skin here. And then in addition, there are nerves. What we'll, uh, we'll use a different color for the nerves here. And ner peripheral nerves have these endings here. This long part is called the axon, and then there are kind of these nerve terminals. And these terminals have special sensory structures for determining, you know, what's going on in terms of temperature and pressure and a whole bunch of other stimuli. And the, what's important for our purposes is the presence in this oftentimes in the space between the nerve endings and the wall of the blood vessel, there's this very important cell that is part of the immune system. And it loves to live in between the wall of the blood vessel and the nerve endings here. And this cell has as one of its main characteristics, the presence of an enormous number of purple kind of, let's see if I can fill this in here, purple dots. I don't know if this is easily visible, but the whole cell is full of these 
many, many purple dots to the degree where the cell looks just like a bag of purple dots. And this cell is uh, called the mast cell. Let me draw that down there. This is the mast cell, M-A-S-T, like, like the mast of a ship. That's what it looks like. But in fact, it was named uh, after the German word mastzellen, um, which means kind of stuff full. Now, what's up with these purple dots? Well, it turns out that these purple dots are actually little packets of chemicals, and they're called they're called granules. Granules. And you can think of the granules, each one of these many, many uh, purple dots like this. The granules, this cell is stuffed full of them, and they're kind of like water balloons. They're like ba little bags of chemicals. And the mast cell is able to synthesize a great number of chemicals, scores and scores of different chemicals, the most notorious of them being histamine. And you've probably seen or maybe even taken medications that are antihistamines, and that's relevant to treatment of urticaria or hives because hives as we'll see in a minute are intimately related to mast cell chemicals so what happens in hives the mast cell by the way is one of the many cells of the immune system it doesn't it lives in the skin but it doesn't start off life in the skin it comes from the bone marrow and it gets out of the circulation and then it kind of takes up residence in the skin and at some point will talk uh, about other places where mast cells live because mast cells love to live not only in the skin but in the lining of the intestines, the gut, and uh, in the lungs, all the places where the inner body is in contact with the outer world. So, you know, here's the outer world and here's deep in the tissues and the inner world and mast cells are some of the kind of border patrol cells of the immune system. Well, what happens is that either, better choose a new color here, either there is some external trigger, draw this lightning bolt here, that, uh, that hits the mast cell, or there can sometimes actually be an internal trigger. And when one of these triggers, either an external trigger or an internal trigger, turns on the mast cell and kind of activates the mast cell. Let's choose a better color here. One of the things the mast cell does is it dumps out these granules. It also does a number of other things. You know, it can synthesize other chemicals that are not already stored in these little granule uh, packets, but it definitely does that. And that has at least three effects. The first effect is that chemicals like histamine, tell this muscular wall of the, uh, of the blood vessel, like the artery, to relax. And when that happens, the fluid that the blood swims in kind of leaks out of these holes. And there's leakage of fluid. You're not actually bleeding into the skin because the red blood cells are too big to fit out. They cannot get out. But the fluid that they swim in starts to leak out of these holes. And that makes the tissue kind of swell up. The second thing that happens is that uh, the, uh, other, the chemicals like histamine tell the nerve endings to send a signal to our brain that we interpret as itching. Itching. And these things are all happening at the same time. Itching. Ah, so itchy. So it also occurs that there are kind of blood vessels here right at the border, the junction between the dermis and the epidermis. And when the histamine kind of affects and kind of diffuses out from here, it tells these blood vessels, which have maybe been squeezed down, to kind of expand out so they get larger. And it's kind of like taking your thumb off the garden hose, that the blood just flows through these vessels much more slowly, sluggishly, instead of squirting along at a high velocity. And so the skin is full of more blood. And you can actually see if you, if you let's say, here's the eye of the observer, right? Here's the observer's eye. And he sees what's going on there. And the skin looks much more red because there are more of these open blood vessels um, it, near the surface of the skin that have all responded to these, the, to these chemicals like histamine. And so what happens in total? The skin starts to get very red, like this, and it gets swollen, like 
that, and it gets very itchy. And that's hives. So essentially, hives are a function of mast cell activation. And I see I'm out of time. So in the next video, we'll talk about the mechanisms of mast cell activation and some of the treatments based on this mechanism. See you in the next video.